Hi everybody, Nurse Michelle here again. Today I'd like to discuss the top 10 myths about the AED. Myths about the automatic external defibrillator. So there's a lot of information about the AED and its use. So I'd like to confirm and talk about some of the things that may or may not be true about them. For example, are AEDs difficult to use? Now the only time you use an automatic external defibrillator is when you're doing CPR or when someone else is doing CPR. And if you're bringing over the AED, all you simply have to do is turn it on and it talks to you. It tells you to apply the pads. It tells you when to stop doing CPR. It tells you when to press the button to defibrillate the patient. So really, um, I know it's a stressful situation we're in when we're putting AED pads on but it really is a simple device to use and it does an amazing job. And for example, um, because it does an amazing job, one of the myths that we should um, talk about is, do I need an AED in the home? Now we're thinking about we'd rather call 911 to get the EMS on the way and that is absolutely true, but 80% of cardiac arrests occur in the home. So maybe it is not a bad idea to have family members trained in CPR and AED. So that might be a good idea. So it is a good idea to have AEDs available wherever possible, even if that means in your home. Another myth is the timing of a shock with an AED. If an AED isn't brought over in the first two minutes of cardiac arrest and CPR started in the first two minutes, is it too late to deliver that shock? It is never too late to deliver that shock. If the AED is applied and the AED analyzes and says there's a shockable rhythm, then certainly it is not too late to defibrillate the patient so, or the victim. So it's certainly worth putting the AED whenever it arrives on the scene, even if you think it might be way past the first two minutes, which of course is your best opportunity for success. Another myth we'd like to talk about is the use of pads on different age groups. Is it not allowed to put pads on children? Do you put pediatric pads on adults? You know, people feel um, nervous when they have maybe the wrong size pads. Now, usually the size pads that we have available are adult pads. Adult pads can certainly be used on adults, and they may also be used on children and infants as well, if that's all you have. So the jewels that we use may be, you know, 200, 360. We're not even sure the exact number unless we know, know more information from the AED. But when we're doing the pads and pressing the, you know, shock button, we're not really sure exact number, but it is safe enough to use the pads, adult pads on children. Now the other way around, is it okay to use smaller pads, pediatric pads, on the adult? It is not worth using pediatric pads on an adult. Pediatric pads deliver usually 50 joules because it has an attenuator on it, reduces the joules. So CPR is far more advantageous for an adult if adult pads are not available. So that is true. Do not use pediatric pads on an adult just do CPR. But yes, adult pads can be used on pediatric patients. Now what about using the AED pads on a patient that has a um, pacemaker or defibrillator in their chest? Some people think that you're not allowed to use AED pads. You can use AED pads if you're doing CPR on any victim. If there is a bump in their chest from their pacemaker defibrillator, just stay at least two inches away with the pads. Put the pads on in a different location and that will um, not harm the device. Can AEDs malfunction and not give enough energy or joules? So usually AEDs are very reliable. If there's any doubt in the AED not providing enough energy or not analyzing rhythm promptly, just do CPR. Any doubt with the machine, just do CPR. But probably 99% of the time they work properly and they can't save lives. 
Um, do I need to be a health care provider is a question I often hear in order to use an AED. Anybody that has taken a CPR class, whether it's a health care professional or a community type of program, we all learn how to use an AED. So you do not have to be a health care professional to use an AED. And if an AED is brought over to a scene where CPR is being provided, uh, one can follow directions because once you press the AED button on, it tells you what to do. So you do not have to be a healthcare professional to do to use an AED. Are there resources in the community to learn CPR? So that's another myth that there are not enough classes to learn how to use an AED. And like I said before, um, not only do you learn how to use an AED in healthcare BLS programs, but also in programs for the community, like Family Friends for American Heart Association, American Red Cross. They all offer many classes in your community. All you need to do is um, search through your local library. Um, you could search through hospitals and healthcare networks. Look on the internet. Um, American Heart and Red Cross will offer you through the internet classes in your zip code. So there are plenty of resources in the community. Another um, myth I'd like to talk about is when you put AED pads on, does the chest have to be dry? So certainly there's better skin contact if the skin is dry. But always the recommendation is, is to get the skin as dry as possible. So there might be a perspiration, sweating, it could be raining, uh, puddles, football games. Uh, the chest might be moist, but that's okay. So just get the chest as dry as possible and it's safe to use the AED even if it's slightly moist. So um, thank you for listening to me about the myths of the AED. And certainly, I look forward to um, talking to you again. Uh, check out other articles and information on thenurseeducator.com. And thank you for your time. Bye-bye.